Hey guys, T-Bomb here. I hope you're all doing well. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologize for my lack of activity over the last um, few weeks. I was actually waiting for my guitar and now that it's arrived, we're going to be unboxing it and I will try and give you the most honest review about it. If something's not so good, I will make sure to mention it. Um, please stay until the very end because there will be a little challenge at the end. So yeah, enjoy and I'll see you in a bit. Yes. Uh, lots of paper. One eternity later. Oh, there's actually no box. It comes in a little gig bag, courtesy of uh, Stars Music. So, let's have a look. It's very nice of them to provide a little cover for it. I didn't pay for it. It's just a freebie, I suppose. And there she is. This guitar, the RG550, uh, was first created in 1987 uh, and was produced all the way to 1994. It basically was a a slightly different version of the JEM, uh, which was Steve Vai's signature in 1987 as well. I believe they introduced both models at the NAM of 87 and instantly rose to fame. Uh, that was really Ibanez's breakthrough in the, in the guitar industry. Before that, they were mostly known for doing jazz guitars and Les Paul copies. Um, they were one of those Japanese brands that were um, I don't really know, like they were allowed to make um, or they weren't threatened by legal consequences for doing Les Paul copies. So that's what Ibanez was doing until they signed Steve Vai uh, and basically got as big as, you know, as we know them today. That's about the story of this guitar. Now, why did I want to get this guitar? Well, the first time that it caught my eye was um, looking at live footage from Carcass. Uh, I know Mike Amat used to play this guitar, especially around the Necroticism era. I kept seeing this guitar and I, I really kind of fell in love with it. Um, and yeah, I also, you know, I've been a big um, big Jackson fan for a while. Um, they were really my go-to brand, uh, Jackson and Charvel. Um, but yeah, I've, I've heard so many good things about Ibanez, especially the, the quality of their higher end uh, guitars. And yeah, I mean, I, you know, this one's basically perfect. It's exactly what I expected. So the first thing I notice is um, the weight. It's quite light. Um, it's, it feels as light as my Jackson Dinky, although the body is a bit larger. Um, it's very comfortable as well. There's a, a body cut, which you can see here. There's a, an armrest cut here. You know, it's very, yeah, very comfortable guitar when you place it down. I mean, I've only tried it for five minutes, but so far so good. Um, the neck is extremely comfortable, very thin. I believe that's their wizard neck profile. Um, yeah, very thin. The strings they've put on, I suppose, on 946 or 942. And looking at the, you know, the paint job and overall craftsmanship, it looks spotless, honestly. Like, I don't see any, any problems with the paint. You know, everything seems pretty solid. Um, nothing's loose. Should probably try and play. Um, I'll play with the with the strings like this in standard tuning, uh, running through a few presets, clean different mic configurations, and then I will change the strings, down tune it to B, and we'll try it again because that's essentially why I bought that guitar. <laughs> 
All right, we're back, all plugged in. I'm gonna be running the guitar for my Digitech GSP 1101 and my BBE Sonic Maximizer to give it a little bit more uh, definition. So um, this guitar has five positions for the pickups. First one is the V8 bridge pickup. Second one, those two. Third one, S1 single coil by itself. Fourth is those two. And finally, um, the V7 neck pickup. So I'm going to start off with the, in the bridge position and clean tone, even though I don't really use it, I feel like, you know, it's kind of compulsory step in a, a review. <laughs> pretty clear. Um, I find it a little bit more bassy than my um, Simo Duncan TB4 that's in my Jackson Dinky. Um, it seems to be a bit more, yeah, more bassy. Um, just as clear though, it's, it's quite nice. Um, second position. So this one feels a lot more weak. I don't know. It's it's supposed to be two coils, but it does not really sound as powerful as the first position at all. Um, single coil now. Yeah, kind of the same thing. Not, not that much uh, oomph. Fourth position, so these two now. Again, uh, sounds more like a, just a single coil to me. It doesn't have nearly as much uh, as much output as I would like, or but I, I probably won't use this position now, so I'm not too fussed about it. And lastly, um, neck pickup. We'll change things up a little bit. Quite nice, quite round. Um, it's kind of what you would expect from a neck pickup, but uh, yeah, it's it sounds it sounds very good. So let's move over to the distortion settings now, because quite frankly, that's what this guitar is going to be doing anyways. So let's go. One thing I forgot to say is I've so I've put the bar in the in the tremolo. This is an edge tremolo. Uh, I'm not really used to them. I, I mostly on, I only have float rows on my other guitars. Um, so I managed to put the bar in, I shoved it in and you know had to push quite hard, but it, it got in eventually. It's a bit loose. I don't know if you can hear and see. It's not, yeah, it's not staying in position. Um, it's not that stiff. When you spin it around, it seems to fix it a little bit. So if you guys know how to fix that, um, please let me know in the comments because um, that's going to be a bit annoying, I think, in the future. Other than that, the trim was pretty good, like, you know. You can do all you want, really. So yeah, that's pretty good. And now let's check the tones out. Quite a lot of sustain. You know. It's actually quite surprising for a guitar that light, but it's nice. So all in all, it's a very nice, very nice pickup. It sounds very clear, um, definitely does the job, has a lot of sustain. It's quite easy to pull off harmonics. <laughs> it's 
So that's always a good thing, uh, even pinch harmonics. I'm not gonna do the middle positions because honestly, I, I'm not gonna use them at all. Um, let's move over to neck pickup. sustain um, yeah it's very round uh, as is expected from a neck pickup but more so than in my dinky which has an uh, it's JB 50, so 59 uh, Seymour Duncan I feel like this guitar is just overall has more low end to it than my other one so yeah and for the leads has a very, yeah, Chris Pollen sound, you know, very, very rich and silky, not sharp at all. So yeah, in a nutshell, you can tell how this is a lot cleaner. Um, for thrash, it's very good. So altogether, it's a great guitar. It sounds very, very good. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the humbuckers, knowing that they are um, Ibanez. I didn't really know what to expect, but yeah, in in the bridge and in the neck position, it sounds perfectly fine. The rest I don't really care for anyway, so I'm I'm not that disappointed. Um, the strings are actually 942s, and uh, they are a little bit, you know, they are a bit too light for what I'm for what I'm playing. Um, I also noticed the action being quite high at this point, so I'm gonna have to set that up. And the last thing is, it's the only guitar I have which has a, a middle humbug, a middle pickup, and I find it a little bit annoying because it, you know, I when I play, I I seem to just bump on it all the time, so it's a little bit of putting, but I'll have to get used to that. Other than that. Um, playability wise it's perfect the neck um, is really growing on me as well I'm gonna be putting on some 1256 strings uh, and then I'll be back with you and we'll try out you know some carcass <laughs> alright boys um, the sun's out I've changed the guitar is tuned to be standard 1256 uh, it's time to play some carcass but before I start, um, I have to admit, 1256, I was a little bit skeptical it was going to be too hard to play, um, especially I've, I've, I've been told the D string, which is the third from the top, which is 24, um, would be a little bit aggressive on the fingers. Um, but it's actually, it's, it plays very nicely, I'm really pleased with it. Um, just for the record, Bill Steer uh, said in an interview he was using 1256, that's why I went with it. Just carcass setup really. Uh, and here we go. Let's let's play some carcass. We're gonna start off with uh, some symphonies of sickness and then necroticism. <laughs>
It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I have no words. Honestly, I can't wipe the smile off my face. It's beautiful. It's powerful. Um, it's it's very easy with the thick strings to like really play the rhythms and and these kind of things. Like, nah, nah, it's beautiful. Um, let's maybe check the lead tones. And this one is complicated. But it does it perfectly. That that thing is beautiful, honestly. Other than the bar, which is a bit wonky, it is a thing of wonder. Just a few words to conclude. This guitar really is beautiful. Um, it plays beautifully. It's crafted very well. Um, for less than a grand, it's definitely a steal, uh, especially considering it's made in Japan. A um, couple of things to note though, the tremolo is a, a bit wonky. The middle positions for the pickups, I don't find them very useful. But other than that, it's definitely a T-Bomb recommendation. So thanks a lot for staying until the very end, I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you liked the video. As promised, I'd like to introduce you guys to a little challenge. So. I've played a few songs throughout the video. Um, the first one of you that can name each and every song that I've played correctly in the comment section will win a 30 euro Amazon voucher so you can buy yourself whatever you want, band t-shirt, guitar strings, guitar picks, whatever. Um, and you have until the release of my next video to win. So good luck, keep in touch, bye bye.